My name is Gloria Birech, pharmaceutical technologist from Good Life Pharmacy. Today, we are going to talk about sexual wellness. Under sexual wellness, we have different methods of family planning. We have hormonal and non-hormonal. When it comes to non-hormonal, we have varieties at all our Good Life stores across the country. In order to maintain healthy sexual lifestyle, we advise you eat well, exercise, keep fit, and manage your stress levels and anxiety. Good evening and welcome to Health and Wellness. My name is Zaitun Ali. Remember, we're coming to you from the Fairview Hotel right here at Bishop Road. And on today's episode, we will talk about vasectomy. This is a permanent male contraceptive method. And most of the people call it the final cut. But we will have the final say from our doc, um, Dr. Kevin Murezi, who is a medical practitioner from the, the Murray Stops, right? And also we have a beneficiary of this procedure, the vasectomy. He is called Said Ndamwe. Asad sana, kujungana leo. Karibu sana. Also on the right side, I have an audience who are ready to build onto the conversation, share experiences and also ask questions to these experts. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Dr. Ari, thank you so much for making time. And this procedure has very many unfounded, um, what's it called, uh, fears from it. What is the problem? What is vasectomy? And why do people really fear this thing? <laughs> okay, thank you so much for having me on board. Yeah. I will start by introduction, so you did so. Okay. Uh, my name is Kevin Murevi. I'm a medical officer at Maristops Kenya. Yeah, now a uh, vasectomy is a male sterilization procedure. It is a permanent method of contraception that is offered to men. So in simple terms is if you want, if you don't want to have any children in future, you can have this procedure. Mm -hmm. It is an irreversible method that offers permanent uh, contraception yeah. in simple terms. Yes. Yes. And uh, next to you, is born aside. Yeah. Abariako. Nizuri. You nasema you've gone through this procedure before. Yeah. And toaleze kulikuwa aje. Kulikuwa. Ah, kule korokocho. Ana karibangi kulikuwa na chifunza mambo ya community health workers. It's kwa sababu naitwa community health frontier. Na wakati tulikuwa tunasoma Tulipendelea sana kuenda kusoma masomo kule mahali wa metuita na Maria Stop. Mm -hmm. uh, Daktari alikuwa naitua Dr. Machoka. Na katufundisha kuhusu mambo ya family planning. Yes. Na tukafraia sana mwisho, tukafanyua counseling, tuka, tukawana umuhimu wake. Kwa sababu mindi kuwa na ototo wa ine. Mm -hmm. Ne kaona kweli tunasaa kila mwaka. <laughs> ne kulingana na mtoto kiti na mimba, mama alisaa watoto kumina sita. Sasa wote walikufa tulipake wa ini. Sasa walisama alipisha kisa, tulipishe kisa. watoto <laughs> weki. <laughs> Lakini wakati tulipata masomo, yes. ni kawana apana ni musiko ni kwangu. Na mama nae akaangalia, aka kasama ni musiko ni, ni kwetu. Ni lasma, Mmoja apange, mi ni kakwampia, mi ni kote yari. Pasi tukafanyua. Ili kwa mwaka upi? Elfu mbili, elfu mbili na sita. Elfu mbili na sita? Mm -hmm. Ah, 2006. Mm -hmm. Tuko na watoto wa hini. Wane. Mm -hmm. Ah, after, after, after this uh, vasectomy, mm -hmm. how was it for you? How was the procedure like for you? Ulienda through hii procedure vasectomy. Hmm. Ilikuwa hiyo hiyo siku enye mlipata mafunzo ama ulienda nyumbani ukavua ulienda, ulienda nyumbani tukakaa uh -huh. tukakaa uh -huh. na tukaona ili tuambie tuambiane tunaonaje tukakubaliana na mama na ukaenda after one week kule ilikuwa Alice Nazim home uh -huh. alafu tukafanywa pale 
tukaka pale tukafanywa ushauri tena tukafanywa mimi mwenyewe mimi nikafanywa oh ilifanyika na siku moja peke yake matatika tu ah kwa sababu si nachukua muda wanaangalia msipa ya kupeleka mbeku ya kupeleka mbeku kutoka kwa mayai ili naweza kupeleka wakaangalia msipa ili ndio waka, wakatoa wakafunga na mimi naongea tu Aha. si ile ilikuwa operation ya kulala ukose fahamu mm. ndikuwa na furaha tu naona tu oh okay mm. Mr. Kevin yes. you can uh, hear about his story and uh, is it a minimal invasive procedure how is it normally done oh. <clears throat> okay so uh, vasectomy i would say it's a day procedure It is a procedure that is performed within 15 to 30 minutes. It is uh, done under local anesthesia. A local anesthesia is what we, we say that you get an injection at that particular uh, place where the procedure is happening. Mm-hmm. So the procedure itself a person walks in. Yeah. Uh, we set up normally there's a we can do it in a minor theater or mm-hmm. a setup if you are doing outreaches we do it in a tent or a set up like a room we set up our things and we do the procedure there so first it is a sterile procedure okay so st- by sterile procedure we mean that it is a very clean procedure we try as much as possible to avoid infections mm. so we the person lies on their back mm-hmm. we call it supine so once you lie on your back uh, <clears throat> we identify where we are doing the uh, procedure so we clean the area mm-hmm. and then we inject that local anesthesia we give it around 5 minutes <clears throat> for it to cause the numbness of the area okay once we it has uh, uh, kicked in we now uh, get we, we use what we call a no scalpel um, vasectomy Okay. It means that we don't use any knife or we don't cut through the skin at any point. Okay. So we use special forceps. There are forceps that we use we burrow into the skin. Mm-hmm. After identifying the the spermatic cord or what we call vas deferens or the like the pipe that connects the sperms from the their storage okay. to the outside. Yeah. So we we identify that pipe yes. and that is the pipe that we cut mm-hmm. so we open it we cut and then we tie so it's a cut and tie mm-hmm. all this time we are talking the yeah. person is not asleep they can even be watching what we are doing so we just cut it we tie it there's a procedure we use there's a technique we use to tie mm-hmm. so that they don't uh, reconnect mm-hmm. and then we return it inside we take there are two pipes so we have to cut both of them so the procedure takes approximately 15 minutes once we are done cutting yeah. we don't even do suturing we just cover with um by suturing you mean kushona sasa yeah we don't atushoni ah okay eh, okay. it's like a small very small mm-hmm. yeah. incision afterwards when they tafuta oh yeah so we just use a, a elastoplast or a small gauze mm-hmm. for covering that's all by tying um the places that say that the tying can be sealed also and uh, <coughs> heat is it the same process <coughs> yes there's a there's a procedure we call cauterization mm-hmm. that is we use heat to sort of burn so this is the after we cut yeah. this end we burn it so that uh, that opening is sealed completely okay so we can either burn we can either burn inside or we can burn outside or we can just tie oh. if uh, for those who have maybe advanced uh, uh, if there are advanced mm-hmm. equipments or that cauterization machine then we burn oh. but if there's none we just tie once you tie the opening is sealed um Said has said he did his procedure uh, in 2006 So why is it until now that this procedure still <laughs> arises and founded fears from uh, the general public? Now, uh, out there there is a lot of propaganda. Yes. There is uh, a lot of fear. Normally uh, you will find that uh, most men 
will will be a bit conservative yeah. when it comes to their genitalia or when it comes to their male organ. Yeah. So anything touching or even walking around there mm. is a no-no. It's a disaster. Yes, and then <laughs> there's a propaganda that uh, once this procedure is performed on you, mm -hmm. you cease being a man, which is very wrong. So it's a fear amongst men and it's a fear that is also spread by some people yeah. who don't really know exactly how the procedure is performed or what happens after the procedure is performed. Yeah. So I feel like uh, it has not also been uh, advocated for widely. Mm -hmm. It has not been uh, something that has been accepted in the society, yeah. especially our African society. Yeah. We have always thought that family planning is meant for the ladies. Alone, yeah? Yes. Now, but uh, so far I can say that uh, there are many men who are doing it, mm -hmm. but they are doing it without maybe saying oh, they have done it. The public. They don't say it to the public because yeah. they fear that stigma. Said, pale katika jamii, ulipofanya procedure yako, watu alikuchukulia vipi? wali waliona kama ndikosea eh. kwa sababu walikuwa ni process ya kusawa na ono ndo watoto wengi ehe uliweleza waliona sicha fanya vile familia mm -hmm. lakini sisi na mke na mke wangu tuliona tumefanya kitu ya kusara sana eh. kwa sababu sisi ndio tutalea watoto ehe ni yeah. kweli na mm. baada ya procedure yako kufanywa unaweza tueleza um, ile hali ya kupona ilikuwaaje kwako a uh, kwangu ilipona tu uh, kwa sababu vile tatwala anasema yes ichukui kama operation ni kitu ambayo kinafungwa tu mm -hmm. na inarudishwa na weka plaster mm -hmm. and the answer ku week moja inafanya kasi yangu ya kawaida na mambo oh so yeah. kupata infection yoyote kusafisha ilikuwa tu sawa ehe yenyewe ndio na tu iko sawa mm -hmm. Si ilichukua hati nirudi uko kwa ustalini, mm -hmm. waangalie ni nini. Ulirudi? Hapa. Ah. Mm. Ulikawia mezi ngapi kabla urudi? Ha, mezi tatu. Mezi tatu? Mm. Na ulipo urudi walikuwa naangalia nini? Wa naangalia? Na. Dakitara niambia, utafanya, uh, kufanya ngono mm -hmm. round. Twenty. Uh -huh. I love Ruti. Sasa nikaona taktari unanipa kibarua usifanyage. Ngoda round 20. Akamwambia hapana si ya kumaanisha utafanya siku moja. Lakini ndiona sitawahi kutumia lakini nitapata ilibidi <laughs> <laughs> utaratibu yake vile inatumika wakanifundisha <laughs> dr kevin yes. eh unaweza tueleza juu ya hiyo because um normally people are told to go back for a check up yes. after the procedure maybe six months or three to six months three months three months yes. yeah after ejaculating maybe 15 to 20 times Tell us how this works and why is the reason as to why you have to go back. <clears throat> Actually, start from how the treatment is like after and then now when you're supposed to go back to see the doctor. Okay, okay. Mm. So now, once this procedure has been performed, uh, I told you we only seal, we use a temporary seal yeah. just to prevent entry of any bacteria. So normally after the procedure, we tell someone to to take a rest for okay. the rest of the day okay. and to avoid any strenuous activity for maybe up to two to three days. Mm. Uh, strenuous activity may involve heavy lifting and yeah. all that. For three days, you can abstain from that. Mm -hmm. Then we encourage that after the procedure, we use other methods of contraception. Mm -hmm. And for the, uh, for, the, for the male, for the men, or for... The, the easier one to use, yeah. we advise we use a condom, at least uh, for the next three months. Okay. Now, the reason we say uh, the next three months is because uh, in these tubes, I told you that there are pipes that are transporting the sperms mm. to the outside. So on this part, we call it the distal part or the part that uh, is still connecting to the outside. There may be some uh, sperms that are still stuck inside and uh, they could cause a pregnancy. Okay. 
So now what we do, we normally advise people to come after three months. After three months, what we do is a test we call semen analysis. Mm -hmm. So we get your semen, we analyze, and we see if there are any sperms okay. that are still there. And if they're there, are they mobile? Are they able to fertilize? Or there, there could be sperms, but they're not able to fertilize. Yes. Now, <clears throat> after three months, yeah. once we do the test and we find there is no sperm, then we give you a, a green card. We give you the go ahead yeah. to have now unprotected sex. Okay. That one we are sure now you cannot be able to conceive. Now there are those that who would want that process, process to be faster. To be faster. <laughs> <laughs> there is okay. uh, there is what you call uh, the, uh, during the procedure. There's, there's normally what is done, is there's flushing. Mm -hmm. Flushing, it means that you get some water, we flush this part that are, as those pumps that are remaining. Mm -hmm. So we flush them out. Now, the person... During the procedure? Let yes. me get that clearly. Yes, during the procedure. You said it's something very small. So how do you flush it with water? Uh, we have syringes that we can use ah, for that. Yeah, because okay. it's a tube. Okay. Yeah, it's not microscopic. It's a tube that you can see. Ah, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... For those ones, uh, 40 to 45 percent, they, they, they theirs comes earlier. Mm -hmm. But also, we encourage that uh, if we can do two sem semen analysis at four weeks and at six weeks, and then we ascertain that there are no uh, sperms, mm -hmm. then we also give you a clean bill to continue with unprotected sex. But According to the research and uh, the new guidelines, the guidelines that are there by... Because everything we do is guided by WHO. Okay. So the WHO guideline says that once we do one test at three months, mm -hmm. then, and there is no spams inside, then that person is okay to go. Uh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And other questions arise from that. Is the procedure reversible? The procedure is irreversible. It's irreversible. Yes, we said that uh, from the beginning, we said that this is a procedure that is done uh -huh. to an adult of sound mind okay. who doesn't want to sire any babies in future, uh, who doesn't, who has had enough of babies, okay. whether, whether, uh, whether planned or unplanned. Uh, so once we do this procedure, we tell, we encourage people that uh, to. Mm -hmm. It is an irreversible procedure. Okay. Now, some could argue that uh, it is reversible. Uh, in Kenya, currently, I am not aware of anywhere that we do the, uh, the reversal okay. procedure. Okay. It is a very expensive procedure. And uh, the success rate of reversal is less than... 30%. So it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. That will be reproductive. Yeah, and it will be. This one now will be will involve a specialist. It yes. will involve. A, a, it is a major procedure. Okay. To reverse is a major procedure, so we discourage highly uh, the reversibility of it all. So you've never gotten cases of people who are regretting what they did and uh, would like to have a different outcome. As a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, I haven't. Oh, so okay. far in my practice and. The ones that I've encountered, yes. there is not a single person who has told me that they regret the decision. Yes, they they are actually they are very happy okay. with the decision. Ah, okay. Yes. So we want to take a short commercial break. Remember, we are still here at the Fairview Hotel, and uh, we've been discussing about vasectomy, the procedure, um, how it's done, and the treatment. So after the break, I'll be engaging our audience, and they will have a chance also to shoot questions to our doctor over here. And we'll also talk about the myths and misconceptions covering um, vasectomy procedure as a whole, and then we'll get the facts and how best it is um, successful. So stay tuned, we'll be right back.
welcome back remember this is health and wellness show my name is Zaitun Ali and we are filming from the Fairview Hotel right here at Bishop Road Upper Hill and um, the show today we are discussing about vasectomy so it's a permanent male contraceptive method and before the break we we had Dr. here, Dr. Kevin Greevy, a general practitioner from Mary Stops, and also Saeed, who is a beneficiary of the procedure. So we've had the experiences and how the procedure goes. So right now, we want to also engage our audience, um, let them ask questions about this procedure. Uh, but before then, Dr. maybe one thing I want to clarify about the procedure. So um, there are myths around it and misconceptions. And some people say that... Um, now that the sperms are not being transported yeah, to where they were supposed to go initially, they will continue building up. Maybe clarify this. <laughs> okay, so um, we remember that uh, the sperms, yes. they are microscopic. Okay. So they are very tiny things, very tiny cells actually. So it's not something that even if there are millions of them, you would see them. So the production continues. The production of the sperms is majorly uh, from the male gonads and they are stimulated or the production is made possible by the hormone we call testosterone which continues to be produced. So the production continues yeah. and the storage continues. Now, uh, there are people or rather there are, mm -hmm. there, are, there, are, there are people who choose to be celibate for their for, 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 the, for life. Yes. There are people who don't engage in sex. There are people who don't normally, uh, I would say they don't ejaculate because the ejaculation is what removes the spams. Yeah. Uh, these people don't walk around with swollen uh, parts or anything. So the body regulates, <laughs> the body regulates the production ah. and the storage. Okay. So it is the same. It will continue. You will have a normal life. Okay. like just any other person. Uh, Said, yes. mm. uh, pale nyumbani pia wengine usema ukishafanya procedure hii unakuwa wewe si mwanaume tena vile ulikuwa um, kabla hata uki engage in the sexual activities haifurahishi kama before. Tueleze, ulipata tashwishi hii? <laughs> Sitapata chochote. Nilipata uh -huh. nilipata nilipata hamu sana. Hata hata kuliko mbeleni. Yeah. Sio hapo kama mama akaudisa, "Eh, siku siko siap." Nikomwambia, "Niko sawa." Yeah. Kazi ulikuwa unafanya kama mwanaume. Hata kupita kiasi. Kabisa. So haikusumbuana. Most people say that it makes you less of a man. Acha lala mika. Eh. So I I I I appreciate Said being open. Yes. And is actually talks the truth uh, research again and uh, this is research that has been done yeah. it it shows that people or men who have undergone vasectomy yes. will actually have more fulfilling intercourse uh -huh. than people who have not done okay. the fact behind it is because that uh, now the you are not afraid of having babies yes so you will be more relaxed oh you're calm yes, yes. your mindset is very focused yes. on that. <laughs> and then the spontaneity of it as well so you can you can have it at any point at any time yes without fear so that makes you even have more urge and have a more fulfilling mm -hmm. intercourse and so it's true okay so who actually are uh, can, who who can you and who can you not subject to this procedure? So what is the criteria? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so uh, <clears throat> to begin with, before we do anything or before we perform this procedure, yes. you come to the clinic, we talk to you, we cancel you. So the first day you come and then we cancel you, we take you through steps of the procedure and then we tell you that Categorically, that it is a permanent method. Yes. Now, this counseling uh, will also tell us if this person is being coerced to mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. or if it's their own decision and if they're of sound mind. So, the criteria is first of all, you have to be on of sound mind. Okay. You have to be 
a decision that you've made by yourself, not being coerced by anyone. Mm -hmm. And then we also encourage to have their spouses on board. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a, it encourages them. <coughs> and then uh, after that, we give you time. Uh, we tell you about the pros, the cons. We tell you about the complications that may arise. And then we we let you go, and we give you a date to come back, okay. so that now you can come back for the procedure. Now, mostly we discourage. Uh, young people okay. or people who have not uh, started families or people who could change their mind afterwards. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. during the counseling process, mm -hmm. we gauge and we see that maybe you're not sure you can change your mind later. So if we have any doubts, we don't do it because okay. it's a permanent procedure and then we don't want you to regret it later. So we normally say that if you're young, we give you time so that uh, you can make the decision and maybe come back with that. But the people we discourage are people who are not of sound mind, people who have been coerced, and Those people... Those who haven't started a family yet. Uh, some people argue that they don't want a family. Okay. Okay. But those are the people that we gauge and see if they have any doubts. Okay. If you're planning, maybe if you say that, oh, maybe I might decide to get later, we discourage it. Okay. And then we also, if, you, if your conviction is so high that you want to do it, we encourage you maybe, we won't get, you won't get your own uh, babies. Mm -hmm. we, you can use other methods to get babies. Is there IVF an uh, <laughs> option for men as well? Yes, we can... Um, Explain we to can about IVF. I, yeah, IVF is in vitro fertilization. Yeah. <clears throat> this is whereby a sperm and an egg from a lady are taken. Mm -hmm. They are taken in a, into a lab, they are fertilized and then they are put back inside the womb or the uterus of the lady. It is a procedure that is viable. So we encourage people to, to have their sperm stored in a sperm bank. And then if later they would want to have a baby, they can go get the sperm and they fertilize an egg and they can have a biological baby of their own. If that is not possible, we then encourage them maybe to get other methods of getting a baby, maybe adoption, adoption. or something else. Yeah. Yes. And for this case, Said Mkewake and Luka very supportive when they were going to do the procedure. Hmm. And uh, what happens if your spouse or your partner is not in uh, in line with the procedure and allowing you to do it? So what happens then? Okay, there, there is a joke that goes around that yeah. he, if you want vasectomy to be successful, you have to tell your wife so that it can be successful. That is true. Yes. Yeah, that's <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> but uh, normally, if there is a discrepancy or if a spouse is not uh, agreeing to it, yeah. uh, first of all, uh, the person who is of sound mind and is an adult has the right to make that decision of their own. Mm. Uh, now, when it comes to the other spouse refusing, then it, it draws a thin line because uh, this is a family yeah. and uh, the, 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 the differences might come at home or we try to get why is it that your spouse is refusing, why do you want other babies and all that and all that. We normally sit them down mm -hmm. and most of the time we come to a consensus. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we some men come alone yes. we, we are not saying that you must be accompanied by your spouse okay. you come you can come alone we say it is even better to have your spouse around no, yes. for the support yeah for the um, support. let me use this opportunity to now engage the audience who will go first <laughs> feel free to ask a question start by your name and then who the question is directed to Okay, my name is Kim So, I am going to say that 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 I am going to Elaborate yes. further to the audience, uh, okay. to the viewers as well. Okay, uh, uh, remember we said that uh, the sperm is a very small cell. Yes. Now, what's normally, I, I understand by what he is asking, he's asking is, once you get an ejaculate, yes. 
and you have had your vasectomy done. So what are you ejaculating? Yeah. yeah. Now, what constitutes the ejaculate is amongst many, uh, amongst sperms, mm -hmm. there is other fluids that uh, that come out. Um, there are glands that produce the fluids that come out as the white substance. The white substance is not the sperms. The white substance is what supports or is what gives the sperms life. Okay. Is what enables the sperms to maybe fertilize the egg. So uh, the prostate produces uh, some of the fluids. Uh, there are other glands within that system that once during ejaculation, you find that uh, they, the, the sperms comes and joins these fluids. So what you see actually, what you see, the white substance you see is a, is a semen. The semen, uh, in semen, there are all those fluids and sperms. Okay. So once you've done vasectomy, the only thing that does not come out is the sperms, but you will ejaculate the normal way. So yes. I wanted you to explain to the viewers scientifically and yeah, using the mm. appropriate terms. But again, you can give us your experience. Saidi, tuweleze, unaweza mjibu vile process ilikuwa. Yes, apate kujua zaidi. Kwangu vile takitara meeleza wazi. Ina munga mkono. Kwa sababu si, si mbeku, mbeku inaungana na na hilo fluid. Ndiyo, itoki. Lakini mimi ndiyo enjoy tu life yangu vizuri kwa sababu ninajua hile maji si mbeku sasa mimi ina enjoy vizuri sana kwa sababu mama hata pata chochote ni ku enjoy tu asante thank you so much Patricia for your question um let's get another question sasa si peke yake tunajua hata mama alikuwa na maswali kama hiyo anataka kujua kutoka kutoka kwake mama kweli ni kweli huyo mzee anafanya kazi kweli kweli mama akamwambia hiyo huyo ni tosha okay i thank you majina ni Harrison Mutisia okay swali langu nitaenda kwa daktari ya uh, what is the difference between castration and vasectomy? Thank you so much, Harrison, for that question, Dr. Harry. Now, uh, <laughs> castration, castration is what, uh, it's more brutal. Castration is, uh, uh, for lack of better words, I'll say the, the, the testicles. The testicles are what produce the sperms. Oh, so, yeah. in castration, Th what they do is they stop the the production of sperms. Okay. Now, at the same time, the testicles are what enables or produces testosterone. Mm -hmm. So once you castrated, your testosterone is down and you there's no production of sperms. Vasectomy means vasectomy. Vas the word vas is that vast difference. Uh, vasectomy means now cutting those tubes. So there is no interference with production of sperms or testosterone once you've done vasectomy. Mm. So the major difference is once you're castrated, you stop producing anything that supports you as a man. The testosterone, the sperms are not produced. But once vasectomy is done, mm. every other process runs smoothly. Yes, nothing changes. And for castration in terms of hormones and everything, so once you cut it, how do you on without the testosterone. Now, it your feelings, the emotions, everything. Yes. Yeah. You see, uh, <laughs> when you want to fatten a bull, uh -huh. you castrate the bull. Okay. So, the process of castration means that now you're no longer functioning as a man. Yeah. You cannot uh, have a proper erection. You cannot have the male features that you you normally have. Exactly. So, once you're castrated, your sexual life stops. Okay and your sexual features that defines you as a man stop. So now you you continue living mm. as a person, but uh, you cannot perform, the, your reproductive uh, functions cannot function. Okay, that yes. is well understood. Harrison, you good? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, mm. Any other question? Uh -huh. Yes. Asante, naitua Pamela. Nikona swali hapa. Vasectomy inachukua muda gani ndio wanze kufanya mapenzi? Aswali inaendea nani? 
naendea asi daktari saide saide sawa thank you so much for that question asante sana saide ilikuwa ni muda gani inachukua muda bila tulisema kwangu ilichukua 3 days lakini ilichukua 1 week ni nikaona ni kwa sababu niliona siku tatu kwa sababu nilikuwa najifunza nitaka kujifunza mambo ya kutumia condoms sasa hapana nitaka kuzika sana na na mama ilikuwa one week so and doctor um what what time should it take we say that uh, i said that we we avoid strenuous activities for at yeah. least two to three days okay. so by the third day you can engage you can have your sexual intercourse normally okay yes but with a condom okay yes well answered so most of the times that you get uh, someone has impregnated a woman after vasectomy it's because that period they they were not using any other alternative um contraception methods well, normally we, we we once during the counseling we advise people that vasectomy yeah. is not 100% but 99.9% means almost 100 <laughs> yes there is that caveat of that maybe 1% uh-huh. so which is a uh, which is very rare okay because in my practice i have not seen any that has failed okay. but statistically 1% failure mm. now the other thing that makes people impregnate is mm. they don't follow up mm-hmm. uh, to the clinics that we advise them to come back so you find that someone we tell them to avoid sex for a certain period of time without using uh, we, we, or if you have to have sex you have sex with condom or other contraceptive methods mm-hmm. now if they don't adhere to that then it means they are likely to impregnate someone yeah. and then if you don't follow up on our three monthly clinic the three months clinic time yeah. where we check your sperms if they are okay and then we give you a uh, uh, a go ahead okay. then uh, if you are not okay then you won't realize and you will be likely to impregnate a woman okay yes thank you so much <coughs> yes another question <coughs> okay my name is Lilian Mudeli and my questions are two one more than your side you go on a movie I have a side you can't have a good perspective same luck was a series in the body Lika ah itapatilika ndio ilikuwa sharp sana ilikuwa ndio nilisema ilikuwa na nguvu alikuwa na nguvu kabisa ilikuwa na nguvu kabisa kwa sababu jani itanifanyia chochote kwa sababu ndiwele kwa akili yangu najua niko salama inafanya kazi kila wasiwasi sawa na kwa daktari Thank you for that question. Yes. Okay, so uh, uh, you remember we said that vasectomy does not affect the production of sperms yeah. or the, pro- the production of testosterone. The main hormone in a man is testosterone. And uh, Saidi amesema there is nothing changes mm. as long as you, the production of testosterone is being uh, constant or is continually being produced you will function as a man you will continue being a man okay. now to go back to the question about castration so once you're castrated that's when you now the male organs start uh, shrinking or becoming smaller and non-functional but during your own vasectomy you're clean okay. yes the hormone continues well answered asante sana Yes so we take like two more questions as we wind up the show. Kwa majina naitwa Skola Mwikali natoka Embakasi. Swali yangu inaenda kwa daktari kwa sababu wametueleza kwamba for someone to get vasectomy lazima kwe that person should be of sound mind and an adult. Um I wonder whether there are restrictions of age because uh, here in our country Uh, I think even an 18 year old who has an ID is an adult. Mm-hmm. If they come for the service, will they be given? Thank you so much, scholar. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, I said that uh, before we do the procedure, we you have to sign a consent. A consent means that uh, you have allowed us or you're okay with us doing the procedure. This is after counseling. Now, for the age restriction, 
we don't do it to any minor. Any minor is anyone below 18 years. Above 18 years, we do. Now, when it comes to 18 years, that's when I told you we do counseling and we talk to them, we advise them, mm -hmm. and we, we kind of tell them that this is a permanent method and in future, you might not be able to get any babies. For, uh, for most of them, uh, they take a step. This is now from experience. They, they rethink the decision because mm -hmm. some will come with doubt saying that I thought maybe if I want to get a baby after I get 30, I can reverse the procedure. Now, once we tell them that, we encourage them to use other methods of contraception. So we highly discourage young people or people who have not yet established a family and would want to do it in future, we discourage them. Now, <clears throat> once you hit age 35, then we can, we can do it comfortably uh, once you've made that decision. But at an earlier age, we try and cancel you more, we try and give you time to rethink your decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Skela. So let's take the last question. Okay, thank you. My name is Aris Pam. I would like to ask Dr. Chari, is it possible for vasectomy to be done without the surgery? J, kwa kiswahili, J ineza fanyua bila upasuaji. Thank you, Rispa. I, I, earlier I said that uh, it is a very minor operation. Mm. It, is not a, it is not surgical per se. We said it's non-scapel uh, vasectomy, which means that mm. we use special uh, forceps. And the incision, the, the, the incision that we make is a very tiny incision. Mm. So we don't make you sleep completely. You, we are conversing as we are doing this. We are telling you what is happening, or we even are having other stories. We actually encourage people to come with, or, uh, with the type of music they want to listen to as we do the procedure. Yeah. So it's not a... <laughs> <laughs> it's to not a, your thoughts and yes. everything. Yeah? We don't take you even to theater. We don't. We do it in a minor theater or a setup. Uh, normally, uh, <clears throat> at Maristops, we do, we do outreaches. And these outreaches, we do them in the, in the, in the localities or in the villages yeah. or in other cent centers that do not have theaters. So we can set up a tent, we can get a room, we sterilize the room, and then we do the procedure there. So people walk in as they walk out. Yeah. So once we, we will do it, then you will stand and go. We don't even tell you to sleep. So it's a very, it's a very minor procedure. Nikoma said, yako ulifanyua wapi? Ilikuwa pia... Ilifanyua karibangi. Karibangi. Ah. Iwo tu dakika kidogo kambua si mama enda. Ah, sana. Ata kuna yazisti asikia uchungu. Na kuna swali atu kukuliza. Ulipata complications zote maybe after the surgery. Okay, after the mini procedure. Hata. Hakuna. Hakuna. Okay. Mm. So maybe to add on to that, are there any complications that come as a result of vasectomy? Yes, uh, there, are, there, are, there are what you call the short-term complications that yeah. you can get, yeah. which are not absolute. Uh, one of them is infection. Mm. Uh, so any procedure that is done to you, even a minor cut, you can get an infection. That's why we do it in a sterile room mm. and a very clean procedure. So we the, the numbers are of infection we can say we rarely get complications of infections because we do a prevent a prevention before we start the procedure another complication that maybe is a bit common is pain and mm. once you get the pain uh, we encourage we use uh, maybe ice cubes okay. or they are what you call anti-inflammatory uh, drugs yeah. that you can take for two three days and the pain is gone. Once the pain is consistent, we encourage you to come back so that we can review you. But uh, it's very rare. So you can say out of 10, maybe one person so would come back. So it should not be a persistent pain? It should not be a persistent pain. It should be um, a pain that goes away after you take the medications, like three, four, five days, and it should not recur. Yes. Another complication is what you call hematomas. Hematomas are small black dots that uh, that uh, can 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 occur. And once you get those ones as well, we encourage you to take the anti-inflammatory drugs 
for three to five days and they will be gone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Saidi Pando Santana for sharing mm. the experience. Vile kulienda, kwa mbio umetuwa shafa institutions kumecheka. But at least you've painted the real yeah. picture on how yeah. the procedure is and there's nothing to be afraid about. Mm. Thank you Dr. Kevin also for the insights and uh, where can mm. people find you? Yes, so now uh, I know many, many people will will want to get this procedure in a, in a comfortable setting, yes. in a private setting yes. or a setting where the, it's confidential. So we encourage people to come to us and it is a confidential procedure. We don't go telling people we've done this and this and this. So majorly we do it at various stops. So our main branch is at Isli, Isli uh, Nursing Home. That is the major branch. That is where you will find me as well. Now, but if you have any inquiries, yes. we, are, we also have a, a toll-free line where you can call and make inquiries and you can be advised on when to come to Maristops. And I'll give you the number mm. is uh, <coughs> 0800 so I can repeat, uh, 0800 So once you call that number, yes. it is our support officer number and they will give you directions whenever you are in the country. Okay. Yes. And also there was uh, one of the members from the audience, Mark, you had mentioned about, I don't know if the bike is around, if you've mentioned about the outreach exactly. Yes. Yes. And uh, people, if they want to get the vasectomy, they can they can come there. Sure, sure. We have outreaches, okay. and uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be having the vasectomy week. Okay. Uh, and this is when most people actually who are interested can come to our outreach sites, and the procedure will be done for them. Okay. Yes. So at any Maristops outreach. Yes. 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 Okay. We'll be working closely with government facilities this time around during that particular week. And uh, we encourage people, people in Nairobi can walk to these government facilities near them. Uh, people in parts of Bungoma, they can go to these facilities, uh, the government facilities, and we'll be working with the government facilities. Is it free? Yes. Totally? Yes. Okay. Even for the procedure? Yes. Okay. Now you had it. I'm sure you've learned a thing or two right here on health and wellness. We were talking about vasectomy. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out on our SMS line 22151 on our socials at KTN Home, on my socials at Ali underscore Zaitun on Instagram and at Zaitun Ali on Facebook and Twitter. Remember, we are at the Fairview Hotel right here at Bishop Road, Upper Hill. Stay tuned to the next episode of health and wellness. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.